raw paleo is a raw omnivorous diet. It, it doesn't exclude any groups. It includes raw dairy and raw meat and raw eggs and it's green juice, it's all in there. One of the main reasons for eating raw is all the inherent enzymes are still in the food. And enzymes, they're, they're a catalyst to make every metabolic process in your body work. People are really afraid of bacteria and parasites. Right. And it's really where you, you start with sourcing the right source. So you, go, you can personally drive to a farm, you can buy grass-fed, grass-finished meat. Maybe not in LA, if you're probably not driving to the farm. No. You know, but what you can do is go to a specialty butcher shop and you get a really good cut of meat. And if it's from a clean animal, then it's gonna be clean food. It's that you just really wanna stay, from, stay away from anything conventional, anything factory farm where they're giving them antibiotics and hormones, you know, that's not the best thing to be eating raw. <laughs>
So that's the thing, like we really need a diverse bacteria. We need a diversity. So right. you can get it from fermented vegetables, your raw milk, kefir, kombucha, and raw meat is another great source of, you know, really getting the good bacteria in your gut. Yes, yes, and mm -hmm. it was interesting because I talked to Alfredo, who's mm -hmm. your co-author on the book, uh -huh. and uh, one of the things he said to me was, uh, I was talking to him about uh, probiotic supplements, and he oh. said, he was like, you know, there's like a thousand different species. Uh, yeah, and he goes, you only get like ten in one of those. Right. And he goes, you're really not covering the gamut of all the different stuff that's out there that your body right. needs. I got the feeling that we don't even know fully how many different bacteria we really need, oh, what, right. are, what we really should have in our bodies. Right. Um, that's why I love the diversity of adding in the raw meat. Yeah. The good uh, bacteria. I feel like if you're getting that wide range with the raw meats, mm -hmm. um, then you're really you know, you because you don't. I don't know everything that's in there, and so just get get the food from its source. Yeah. And if you get well, it from its source. Yeah, because bacteria, people, you know, bacteria is not the problem. It's the cure. Uh -huh. It's our friend. It has so many jobs in our body. It's one role is it's a detoxifier. You know, so it's pulling out any heavy metals. Well, yeah. you know that like we really need to make sure we're always getting a lot of good bacteria from whole food mm -hmm. sources because of the role that it plays. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. and I was actually surprised how much I did go through a detox, a little bit of a Herxheimer reaction from the, yeah. the raw beef. Right. And uh, then it felt better and better, that's how I know. Um, mm -hmm. It was really powerful. Uh, now, how did you get into this? I read a little bit well, about it in the book, which was fascinating, but I mean, for the people on the audience, yeah. maybe give them a short version. I started on a raw vegan diet, and that only lasted a year. And the reason why I got into the raw vegan was I took a class at Whole Foods, I was living in Chicago, there was a class and overnight I was really inspired and I bought the dehydrator and the food processor and everything you need and I was like, that's it, I'm gonna be eating raw food. So that's how much this class had an impression on me. And then after a year of eating it, I noticed a lot of deficiencies and I thought, oh, you know, I, was, I thought, how could this be happening? This is the best diet on the planet. But you know, I was bruising, I was low in iron and I was anemic and I was, I was definitely missing things. So then I started going to this store in Venice Beach called Raw Awesome. I don't know if you remember I, that story. I do know of Rossum, yeah. And the folks there, were, they're really into this raw paleo. They eat raw meat and raw dairy, and they kept feeding it, not, not feeding me the food, but the information. You know, you're probably yeah. missing some raw cholesterol, or you're missing the fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, and K, and the iron and the B vitamins, and I, and I kept, you know, I was open to it. I always want to grow and learn, and I could physically see that some things may be missing in my <laughs> diet. Well, so, if you're bruising, that's a pretty good indication. Yeah, yeah, so and that was one of the, you know, finally someone said, let me make you some raw beef. Same thing, I had to have someone make it for me. Like, we just shot a YouTube video. I made it for someone, he ate it. And you definitely should watch that, by yes. the way, because it's, uh, he never had any, he hadn't had beef since, how old were you? <laughs> And in the fifth, fifth grade. grade, so uh, it was his first time eating beef and he ate it raw, so just watch out for that video. Yes. We'll put a link in and there. That's one of the best ways to get started. I was at the store shopping and finally I said, okay, you know, I'm open. Like, there's things going on. I probably want to try the beef. And someone made it for me. And instantly, first bite, I was sold. That was it. Yeah. I thought, wow, this and is, I'm alive. That? <laughs> oh, that actually now is about five years ago. And you're still... And I'm still eating raw mm -hmm. meat, and I've never been sick. I've never gotten sick. I've interviewed dozens of people that eat raw meat for years. They've never gotten sick. And how long so, has Alfredo been eating raw meat? He's been eating raw meat for 17 years. That's my co-author on the book, and he has a lot of knowledge. And you know, I learn a lot from him and yeah. his 17 was, years of eating it. I was shocked because I, I sat down with Alfredo to do mm -hmm. like a little private session about. And he just, it was like information after information. Is, I'm writing stuff down. I couldn't keep up with the guy. And it was like, it was shocking. Maybe because he's so mentally, he's so on tack, you know, like clear. Yeah. yeah. He's, just, he's like, oh, you got this problem here. It's from the wrong meat. Thing. Yeah. He was, he, he's very, he's, he was very confident in, in what yeah. he knew. And I, I really appreciated that. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, what else? There was something in there I wanted to ask about something. I can't remember what it is. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Ah, it's not important. We'll come back to it. So let's talk about these foods a little bit. Now we did. Mm -hmm. We had a little bit of raw beef. Um, mm -hmm. You definitely. You do. You pretty pretty much do raw in all categories, right? 
Yeah, uh, and Robbie. oh, I do. I eat cooked food too. That's the number one question I always get. Okay. Do you eat cooked food? Yes, I eat cooked food. <laughs> you know, I don't think it's healthy to be stuck in this box and this label of an of an identity of not doing something. So I'm I'm open to eating cooked food. It's about twenty five percent cooked, seventy five percent raw. Okay, that's and it includes yeah. So we were saying the raw meat and the I do the green juice in between. So I like to start the morning with a raw green juice. I do have green juice every day too. Okay, yeah, great. So green juice a day, then a little bit of raw meat. So you don't need a lot. It's really filling. It's, it's got all the nutrients. It's nutrient dense food. So you're actually not consuming as much meat as you do when you eat cooked meat. It's interesting because Okinawa, you know Okinawa, Okinawans eat, right? We they have. Eat, no, Okinawans pretty much eat nutrient dense food. Mm -hmm. They eat a lot of raw foods, a lot of seaweed, ocean you know, mm. vegetables, and they eat a lot of uh, raw fish. Right. And they're some of the longest living, healthiest yes. people in the world. With no degenerative diseases, right? Right. Yeah, they're, they're healthy. Like, they're like 90, 100 years old out there playing shuffleboard. Yeah. And, uh, at least in the video I saw, they were out there doing work in the <laughs> I fields. I want to see it. Work in fields, playing games. I don't know if it was shuffleboard, but they were playing some game. They're right. strong. They're healthy. Yeah. yeah. Riding bikes. Yeah, well, yeah. they don't have, you know, these modernized foods. Some of it's not even food. Right. You know, it's like our grandmas wouldn't go to the store and be like, do you have guar gum? And, you know, some of these <laughs> things on the labels are, like, unheard of. I read the label of everything now, and I'm always shocked this thing looks so healthy. And you turn it around, and you're like, what is all this in here? Yeah. And it, it, it really yeah. blows my mind. Right, yeah. It's best to... Now, there, there was this thing. The thing I was trying to think of earlier was mm -hmm. um, when people... Cause Meat's gotten criminalized a lot, especially beef, right? right? Don't eat too much beef, don't eat too much beef. But but as I look at this, what I'm starting to notice is the difference between conventional mm -hmm. meat that's been mm -hmm. injected with all these antibiotics right. and then people who, who are eating raw or not even eating raw, but are eating at least grass-fed, free-range, right. well-treated animals that weren't tortured their whole lives, that type mm -hmm. of stuff. And there's a mm -hmm. huge difference in, I think, the nutritional quality between those oh, two Oh, yeah. Oh, when it's grass-fed, the CLA, I mean, the nutrients go way up. The nutritional profile is so much greater in okay. grass-fed meat. Yeah, that's... The omega-3s. And that makes a huge, huge difference, all the fats. Yeah. yeah, yeah. so that's the thing. People always want to demonize meat that it's really bad for you, but when you're eating grass-fed, it's great. It's good. I actually think of it as a health food. Yeah, I, I, I'm beginning to now, too. Or I do yeah. now. I, I would actually say I would do. And there's a lot of people around the world that are still eating raw meats, correct? They are. Yeah. In France, they call it steak tartare. In Italy, it's carpaccio. I was thinking, I was thinking when I said that, well, I was actually thinking of uh, like primitive tribes still, like or like the Eskimos, right? Oh and, yeah. Uh, I believe there's tribes in Africa still eating raw mm -hmm. meat. Yep, there are. Right. Mm -hmm. They eat kibbe. So, so um, kibbe? What's kibbe? It's a raw meat dish. Raw meat. What is? What are they? In made? Africa. What is it made from? Well, whatever. Kind whatever of meat kibbe. You want. Whatever kibbe is. I don't know. <laughs> you got me curious. Let's make kibbe. Okay. Well, let's take a look at these. These are some dishes that um, uh, Melissa makes. Yeah. These are some recipes some in the book. Recipes. Yeah. And so what do we got here? So this is the raw banana butter cream pie. Okay. Should so we open so you can see? Yeah. So what's in this? So first, I, I hate, the, I don't like that it's in plastic, but I'm traveling. It's the only way to kind of get it down here. Okay. Um, this is, the crust is raw. It's made of Brazil nuts and, and butter and honey. Raw butter, raw honey. And then the middle layer is raw butter, bananas, raw eggs, vanilla bean, and it's frosted with raw cream. So I'm making this up in San Francisco, and I drove it all the way down to L.A. for Brian mm -hmm. here. <laughs> all just for me. Um, <laughs> it's actually <laughs> delicious. It tastes just like a pie. And, it's um, really good. It's just, and it, it hardens best. So when I blend it, it's a, it's a liquid a that I that. pour into the pie, but you put it in the fridge, and the butter hardens back up, mm. and it actually goes into pie form. This is the gateway in. If you're afraid of raw dairy and raw paleo foods, this pie is like sells people because it's, well, it's so like, good. Well, the first time I had it, I remember I was, eating, I was at that coffee shop when I met you and you gave me. Oh yeah. You, I think you gave me some of this, and um, oh, I, I ate it and I was like, did I? I felt like I was eating more of a snack, like a treat, like, right. like I was having a. a a pudding or something. But you treat this as a meal. You treat mm -hmm. this as food. It has all the, the vitamins you need. and the, It's delicious. Yeah, the macronutrients, the micronutrients. I mean, to me, like, I would maybe skip a big dinner and just be like, oh, I'm going to have a piece of banana cream butter pie. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's very good. Mm -hmm. So what else do we got here? This is a raw <laughs> paleo chocolate pudding. It has four ingredients, raw butter, raw eggs, raw um, chocolate, and raw honey. I, I, uh, stuttered for a second because I thought about raw eggs as I said that. So you really want to make sure everything's pasture raised. The eggs are pasture raised. The raw butter is organic. The the cows are on grass. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the main things is 
just sourcing everything right because raw eggs is a big part of the diet. What do you think? And this is delicious. I mean, this I could eat. I mean, I would just, it's like it's a chocolate mousse. It is yeah. just it like a chocolate mousse. It back up because the butter's in there. And it gives you this nice boost of energy because of the cocoa. It does, and, from uh, the cacao powder, but yeah. b butter will give you energy too. And um, yeah, I was really shocked the first time I had this. I gave some of this to Dave, my partner, and uh, he went to town on it, and then he couldn't sleep all night. So, because <laughs> oh, he had it late at night. And, Raw cacao and, uh, will keep you up. So he's been chasing this ever since. So it, it does have this addictive effect. So be yeah, careful that's a with good that. One. Um, this is a this is a delicacy. This is a special one. A lot of people might be like, "What? You're gonna eat that raw?" <laughs> this is bone marrow mousse. So you know, I take the long bone mm -hmm. <laughs> and scrape out the marrow. It's raw marrow and blend it up with raw butter, raw eggs. This has a little mm. raw cream in it. And it's delicious. It's so good. And the benefits of bone marrow. Yeah, they, I like, mean, they have the stem cells in it. Hmm. Yeah, and of course, it's, it, it's a fat, so the fat cell with vitamins A, D, and K. But, you know, all of this, even I was thinking about the, an, the, um, sorry, the good bacteria in it, the uh -huh. probiotic, that's anti-aging, too, as well. Oh, yeah, yeah we have cells that are constantly dying and they need to be replaced and that's all happening in the gut but the probiotics are all working for us and it's, it's an anti-aging food. Well, you know, people shouldn't, shouldn't be falling apart in 60, <laughs> 70 years old. I mean, right? I've seen people in, in my family and generations, you know, my, my grandma and great grandpa and stuff, they were living to be 90 and they were still out doing stuff. So. Yeah, there, I, there's some... I don't some see why people are falling apart. Yeah, we just need to unlearn everything we know and go back to what our ancestors did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they lived out in the Midwest, out in the middle of nowhere. Right, and, and they, they were sturdy, and strong they, Yeah, people. they got up and they worked and they made stuff happen. They didn't sit yeah. around. And That's one of the things I noticed with when I started eating the raw meat, the raw butter, and the raw eggs was that the first two weeks I felt strong. Hmm. I always tell people, like, I, I don't go to a gym and work out. I like my push-ups, but I always feel really strong. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. When I was raw vegan, I kind of, well, like, you, you know, didn't fit. have... Yeah, you fix. look super fit. So, But I always see you on Instagram and stuff with your bike and out in the middle of the I woods. Do, I do out, I do things outside. Yeah. No, no lifting of weights. Yeah. I'm not against it at all. But. You're more of a, um, a move gnat kind of woman, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. Um, now the bone marrow, this is, this is essential for somebody like me who's repairing leaky gut, right? Mm -hmm. This is like the number one food I keep hearing to repair the intestinal lining so that it's ready for a good bacteria. Oh, right. Well, you, and the, well the bone broth too bone broth. really heals and seals the gut. As okay, well. so that's different than the bone marrow. Yeah, the bone broth, you know, you make it's it's a hot broth. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I know what the food different, but it has a different <laughs> has different vitamins in it, right? Different. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Different, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, was, this is really the raw fat of the in the marrow in the middle of the okay. bone. So of course, I mean, it's going to be good for you too, and, and helps with the gut. Okay. But okay. it definitely has different properties than the bone broth. I would do both. Yeah, I'm just, I was told to get as much bone broth as I can right now. Yeah, just definitely. Two, you can even just do two weeks of so. broth and then start bringing in some raw bone marrow. Oh, it's, it's, I, could, I could live on that. That's just about, well, maybe not quite. Yeah, but so it the, would be. the thing is, is you would use this as a replacement for, you know, some people eat sandwiches or whatever they're eating as meals. Now this is your meal. I never want you to like people to add this on to a mm. full meal. This is this is not the food. I, I find I need a little so. more than that, but um, at least yeah. right now, I don't know if that'll change. But um, yeah, you gotta just listen to your. Body. But it, but it's it, but I don't need much more. So right, it, it's a, it adjusts. Now this is a food we all know. That's what I do. I eat it right out of the tub. <laughs> we we both do, Dave and I. <laughs> this is raw butter. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Um, Fats a lot of people would think. I was crazy for doing this because yeah. I remember when I was, little, used to it. I was a little kid and we had a nanny at my house mm -hmm. who was taking care of my niece I'll take some. <laughs> and um, the nanny came over and my mom found her spoon feeding her raw butter. Oh really? And my mom got so mad. It's so bad for her. No, don't do that. And then she's the second time she fired her. Oh my and mom. I, and I thought about it, uh, you know, today that, mm -hmm. that, you know, I don't know where that nanny grew up. Right. But I mean, if she was feeding her raw butter, conventional raw butter, yeah, I get it. You know, it's, it's terrible for right, her. Right, right. But this Where stuff here, from. even my doctor told me to get raw butter and eat it. And my doctor's a health food nut. She said that you, she looked at my, my reports mm -hmm. and said, you need to eat raw butter. That's and, amazing. Great. Mm -hmm. I love that doctor. Mm -hmm. she, she focuses on optimal health and um, she mixes Eastern, Western nutrition, mm -hmm. but she is a full medical doctor. 
Yeah. And she only that's go to medicine as a last so resort, yeah. and she and yeah. she and that's it's how we a found healing her. Food. It's a raw saturated fat, so it's really good for your brain and your whole nervous system. Mm, I can feel the difference. Mm -hmm. I yeah, you can feel it. I have a little bit of that it's every grounding. day, and then I'm also getting it in these different foods. Mm. So on gut health, I wanted to I wanted to uh, bring up a point that we talk a lot here about being able to relate to your emotions, relate to your nervous system, relate mm. to feeling mm. your emotions, so you can connect to other people, so you can relate, so you can right. have a uh, because a lot of the people that are coming to us are stuck in their heads. Mm. They're oh, all yeah. analytical. Yeah. How important is gut health, the, 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 you know, being, having all that healthy gut bacteria and being able to relate to your emotions and emotional health? Right. Oh, I mean, it definitely is tied. The gut-brain connection is all tied. So you're going to be on such a different level when you're healthier here. You'll be more in tune. You know, you can build a ground and feel things. When, you're, when your gut's healthy... That was the right word. Ground. Ground. <laughs> yes. I just, the, you know, Hippocrates said, he's the father, father of modern medicine, all disease begins in the gut. So, you know, once we get our gut in line and healthy, our mind is healthy, it's clear, we can feel things. Yeah, because you know, yeah, it's a gut instinct. Yeah, and then we can relate to other people better. We can connect with other people. I've, I've right. seen the reports or the studies where they show that gut damage can be related to re related to so many different diseases today mm, too yeah and disorders from uh, uh, autism I believe to uh, oh, yeah. ADD mm -hmm. and all these different it's things it's all connected yeah. yeah and then yeah you said look we're connected to other people I always think about a lot of times we're walking around in this human suit but we're really bacteria we're bacteria sapiens just these like like right now like our bacteria <laughs> are bacteria. connecting because we're yeah. alive and you know, it's 10 to 1, so it's it's 1% human cells, and it's 10% 10, 10 or, you know, the rest. 90 is bacteria. So think about that. You are literally have bacteria crawling all over right. your whole body. <laughs> We're Pretty much everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Nice picture. It's everywhere. And they actually, I was, I, I was, I was uh, reading something from Dr. Axe, mm -hmm. and he said just having a dog makes your gut uh, like ex oh, uh, yeah. way more healthier. Because, That's the diversity. Yeah, because the dog's bringing in all these bacteria that your body needs from nature right. that we don't get because we don't live out in nature anymore. Right, gardeners, yeah. having your hands in the dirt, your feet in the dirt, yeah. you're getting all the microorganisms. And yeah. 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 It's because it's, it's, uh, Alfredo makes me eat, uh, or he has me, <laughs> drinking these different powders, like little bits of powders, like red clay, oh, right, bentonite clay. clay, just little bits twice a week to get those yeah. extra bacteria that we don't even know. Like, I don't even think they've accounted for the majority of the bacteria that we probably have in our body. Oh, yet. yeah. I don't, they don't have a, I mean, it's a thousand species is the latest count. But jeez, so, <laughs> That's huge, guys. It's so, a lot of bacteria. Um, don't so be afraid of it. Is there anything else you want to say? You want to talk about your book, where they can yeah, find it, your I channel? Just, um, I think that you just don't, I just don't want people to be afraid of food. I mm -hmm. think you just start, you can eat your regular diet and just start bringing this in one by one and see how the, you can feel the difference. That's the best. I don't want anyone to say, oh my gosh, I can't eat all raw paleo foods. You don't have to. You know, you just start with what you can do. The chocolate pudding's a great start and you're getting raw eggs and raw butter in your diet. Yeah, I by so, no means live on this stuff. I have it. As, as here and there, and I have other foods too, and I by no right. means am I 100% like this. This is, yeah, it, and it's, it's made a big difference. Yeah, it's, it's a vitamin supplement. That's how I think of it. There's so many vitamins, bioavailable things that are going to simulate that, you know, you just eat these for supplementation. And that brings me to your book, which I love mm -hmm. about your book, is we can go through every one of these foods, pretty much, or the ingredients in every one of these the foods. The recipes are in the book. And you also <laughs> talk about every, like, it's so clear and to the point. What are the health benefits of the, uh, in this? Oh, right. What are the health benefits in raw eggs? Right. What are the health benefits in raw? <laughs> yeah, and right. you just go through and break it down. And it's like, you can sit there and see the list. And it's, yeah. it's perfectly written Talk about written raw out. fat, raw cholesterol, why it's mm -hmm. good for you, right? Mm -hmm. And, and then you give us the recipe. there's 100 recipes at the end, and it has a little bit of story in the beginning. Awesome. Yeah. So, um... So where can they find your book? You can find me at rawpaleo.com. I have the book on the website, and then it's on Amazon as well. Awesome. And we didn't have cable TV, so I would watch live music on late night uh, talk shows. So I'd watch Leno and Letterman, not because I cared about what they did, but because I wanted to watch like the one uh, musical act at the end. Like That's what I obsessed over. Um, I have some clients recently that were like, okay, well, I, I just want to go in there and meet women. I'm like, well, are you even aware of who she is? Have you checked in to see if there's even a connection? Can you feel her? They're like, no, woman, go get, do the lot. I'm like, no, baby.